going to be a quick video of what I had to do to solve the issues with this uh, casting on my last video and how we had to line up on it. Uh, we had to communicate with the customer because we we're having problems with this thing. Just looking at it here. Um, and I'll show you some other uh, shots of, of how warped these castings are. They're, they're, they're warped this way and these ears are warped this way and this thing is is kind of not totally square on some of the casting so there's there's a bow in them that either goes this way or, or that or you know that way and this thing here can be a little out of square so we had to change this um, how we probe the part and we had to get some uh, I guess you call changes on the dimensioning of the drawing from the customer on how these four holes were dimensioned because these vary quite a bit in length. I don't know if you can see the, the very first part I ran in the video, the face mill actually um, cut on the fixture a little bit, which is no big deal, but you, I don't know if you can see it here. You see how much further that or longer this piece is in relation to the to the last piece here. This camera's not staying in focus. Um, so these things vary quite a bit. You know, the, the tolerance from here to the the zero point is plus or minus an eighth of an inch, so they don't really care, but what they did was they dimensioned they dimensioned these four holes in relation to this zero point. So if you um, cut this part, you know, you, it's supposed to be 11 inches from here to here. If you cut this off, you can cut too much, like, like on the very first part, like you saw in the last video, here. And you see how these holes are not centered on the ears? And this, this didn't line up with the... There's extra stock on the end of the part here, but it didn't line up. And you see how it left this extra stock on here, and it should have cut this part even shorter, which would have meant cutting into the fixture even more. So I changed the, I changed the way the, um, you know, somebody's over there hammering on something like crazy. Machine shop, that's what you need, a bigger hammer. Um, so I changed the way this is being probed. I'm going to run the probing cycle here, see if I can video this. Um... I can run it again on this part, it won't hurt anything. And we'll see what, how this probes it now. It shouldn't be a problem. So we were changing to the spindle probe. Here. Then come down. See if I can get in here. So it's going to come down, it's going to probe for the G54's Z offset right there. And then it's going to come up and probe that little, the wall to the right of the probe right now for the um, X offset of G54 right there. Okay. Then it's going to move away and up the probe for this, this upper ear up here. probe that to set that X offset appropriate for that hole. It's going to move down and probe the other here. Like that. And we're going to look at the code. It's going to do calculations based on all of that, what it probed there to set to set this, these holes centered, this hole and this hole centered on those ears and also so it faces the correct amount of stock off the end of the casting here and puts these two holes in the proper relationship to the end of whatever it faced off here. Because this is going to vary. You can see how, how much it varied on just the first two castings. And I'm going to also show the um, the boring cycle. Oh, well, I'm not going to actually show the boring cycles themselves, but I'm going to, sh you know, show how how uh, I measured these holes in a uh, 
video clip and how they uh, came out good. These, this is a this three quarter inch bore. These are four half inch bores, and this bore here, of course, and how I use boring heads instead of the reamers for for this hole and these four holes, and how that um, solved the issue of the reamer issue. Let's look at the code. Okay, right here we're calling tool 80 and then we're changing to, to tool 80 which is a spindle probe on my machine. And we're coming to this X and Y position for the first probing point. And this is uh, unclamping and rotating the B axis and back to zero to compensate for any backlash. Clamp the B axis. And then we're coming down to four inches with the offset of that t probing tool and uh, then we're making a safety, Renishaw safety move down to uh, one inch in Z. This Renishaw safety move is good to use in case you strike anything with the stylus before it reaches there. It's going to stop the machine without breaking the probe. Then we're probing the Z axis offset for G54 Z and it's it's probing at minus 340 thousandths and setting the zero 340 thousandths up from there is what this cycle is telling it to do and then safety position move to four and a half inches this is going to probe the the wall of the casting there to set the the x zero of of g54 it's going to come down to minus 150 thousandths so it can intersect the casting. When it probes it, then it's going to probe the X0. This probing point is 4 inches in the minus direction. It's going to set the X0 4 inches plus from where this probing point is. That's what that means. Then we're coming up to Z1 and an eighth inches, 1.125 and we're moving to this location with a protected move again in case we hit anything with the stylus it'll stop and then it's probing the the X0 for G56 the probing point is at minus in 9 inches in X so it's setting the, the 0 9 inches in plus from wherever this probing point is um, the holes in these ears are actually 10 inches over the the radius or the the width of the ear the radius is one inch on the end of the ear and the width is two inches so this is going to set that upper ears hole in the center of the ear wherever it lies on the casting okay then we're moving down for the lower ear probing point here the start of the probing point the protected move then it's probing the lower ear again, 9 inches minus, to set the offset up to zero for this drilled hole. And then it's moving up to 4 inches with a Z protected move. And then it's going to machine zero. Now, all of these variable numbers are just setting the other um, offsets based on what we probed and what is normally uh, the Y's actually could be entered and left. The Y's really don't change but if you were setting this job up for the first time and you forgot to set these offsets it would do it automatically in this program for you. So you wouldn't have to, you just you would just have to set G54's Y and then everything would be duplicated on the Y's here. The Z's are, are set based on the probing cycle up here of whatever this is probed because all of these um, G54, 56, and 57 and 58 all have the same Z offset after you probe it for that particular casting. Then we do this calculation after the this G55's X is after the pallet rotates 90 degrees 
and uh, so we have to calculate where that is the where the parts being faced off on the top is two and three quarter inches up from the Z0 where the lower face is on the first side of the part so we have to add that and then this this as I explained in my previous video is the center of rotation of the B axis and then we're adding the um, the actual Z probing point or the Z0 of the first side so it, that being a negative number it's going to subtract it off this and this is going to and then add this 2.75 and you're going to end up with a the offset for the G55's X okay then we're going to set these common variables of uh, whatever we probe for the G56X in pound 100 and whatever we probe for G57 in pound 101 that's what these numbers will call whatever is on the offset page for those two offsets and set it on the these two common variables here then we have to do these statements because what we want is is on uh, these if statements if we we want the offset that is furthest in the negative direction to um, calculate the how much we're going to face off the end of the part so we don't face off too much stock so so if in this statement if pound 100 which is what this probing point is less than or equal to this probing point pound 101 then the, this will immediately jump to the end sequence number 1000 and set pound 103 at that number that equals pound 100 and then after that it would jump to N103 down here but if this condition wasn't true it would read this next line and it says if pound 101 which is the probing point for G57X is less than 100 the probing point for G56 then it's going to jump to this 101 line and it's going to set pound 103 equal to the probing point for uh, G57 then we're going to do this calculation to set the Z offset of G54 or 55 excuse me so that it faces off the appropriate amount of stock and this is the center of rotation in the b-axis from machine zero and then this is the length of the part and this is the what we probe for um, whichever whichever offset was more in the negative or, or minus direction okay so and then it's gonna calc do that calculation and it's gonna set G55 based on the the longest or the most negative offset I should say then this is going to calculate or it's going to set G58's X at whichever was the the more negative offset I've, I've written it greater but it, it actually be the the lesser because it's a negative number in in reality so so that's um that's what we're doing at the probing cycle in order to line up on this casting now And here's the three quarter inch bore after using the boring head right in the middle of the tolerance half inch holes look good And it, the 2.4404 four.